Hey guys, in my last video I taught you how to find the sum of a finite geometric sequence using this formula right here. That's an R, by the way, if you can't tell. And in this video we're going to talk about how to find the sum of an infinite geometric sequence. So you can't use this formula anymore. There's a brand new formula for us to get to use. So there's two types of infinite geometric series. And I like to think of them like a number line. So that would be 0, plus 1, plus 2, etc. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So geometric series, one of two things will happen. The series will go on forever, in which case you cannot find the sum. An example of a series that goes on forever would be one where the common ratio is more negative than negative 1. So it could be negative 2, for example. Or the common ratio is greater than, sorry, not equal to, strictly greater than and less than. So the common ratio is greater than 1. So if the common ratio is 3, this series will just go on forever, get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, approach infinity, and therefore you cannot find its sum. Convergent geometric sequences, the common ratio is between positive 1 and negative 1. So think of all the positive and negative decimals that are between negative 1 and positive 1. It could be negative 0 0.8. It could be 0 0.6 repeating. Stuff like that will be a convergent geometric sequence. Negative geometric sequences converge in a way that's kind of like this. So you'll have, you'll jump back and forth between some points, and eventually you'll just land on one point, and that's where this series converges. If your common ratio is positive, it's kind of like this. Your numbers will get bigger and bigger and bigger, but eventually the amount that you're adding on to them will approach zero, and adding on zero is essential to not changing anything, so then your series would converge. But you don't need to know that. That's just my sort of explanation. The really important thing to remember is that if you're asked to find the sum, the series needs to converge. The common ratio needs to be either less than 1, sorry, between 1 and negative 1. So we've got the example 5 minus 1 plus 1.5 minus something we don't know what dot 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 goes on forever. So the first thing we're going to ask ourselves is what's the common ratio? Because if the common ratio isn't between 1 and negative 1, we can't find the sum anyway. So all you need to do is take one term, including its sign, and divide by the term in front of it. So I could do 1 over 5 divided by negative 1 would work, or it would be a lot easier to go negative 1 divided by positive 5. A negative divided by a positive is negative, and 1 over 5, I'll tell you that as a decimal, 1 divided by 5 is just 0 0.2. So because negative 0 0.2 is in between negative 1 and positive 1, if we looked on our number line, negative 0 0.2 would be like around here somewhere, we know that the series is going to converge. So we can find its sum using the formula S, or sum, equals to T1, the first term, over 1 minus R, the common ratio, which is pretty cool. That's a pretty simple formula for such a sort of crazy idea. You might see T1 expressed as A instead. I would just keep it as T1 because I won't be able to remember what A stands for, so that would not help me at all. The first term in this sequence sign matters. It's positive 5. 1 minus r, we found the common ratio was negative 0 0.2. So we've got 5 over minus a negative number, it's just positive, 1 plus 0 0.2 is going to be 1.2, and 5 divided by 1.2 is going to equal 4.1666 repeating. So, it would have been better if we 
use? We would have got a nicer answer instead of a decimal approximation if we had not put the common ratio as a decimal. So I'll show you how to do that. 1 minus 1 over 5, negative. So that's the same as 1 plus 1 over 5. To add fractions, you need a common denominator. So I'm going to say 1 is equivalent to 5 over 5. And now they both have 5 on the bottom. 5 plus 1 is 6 over 5. Dividing by a fraction is the same as flip the fraction. So 6 over 5 becomes 5 over 6. Change it from divide to multiply. Go up here a little bit. So the sum would be 5 times 5 is 25 over 1 times 6. And 25 divided by 6 is approximately equal to 4.167. So we found that the sum of this infinite convergent geometric sequence is about 4.167.